Welcome back, everybody, to News Now from Fox. We are taking a live look at the White House in Washington, D.C., but we have a very special guest joining us this morning via Zoom. Currently joining us right now is Frank DeAngelis. He was the Columbine High School principal at the time of the mass shooting, the Remembrance Now, 22 years after it happened. Good morning, Mr. DeAngelis. How are you, and how are you feeling today? Good morning. Um, it's... Uh... I'm doing okay. You know, we had a coin to phrase back then, a time to remember and a time for hope. Uh, we'll always remember our, our beloved 13, but I think Columbine also represents hope, especially during these trying times. You mentioned trying times. How are you feeling with the sentiments that we are currently in here in the U.S.? If it's, it's at least once a week, we are probably hearing about a mass shooting lately. Well, I think it triggers a lot of emotions. I know uh, very close to where we are here in Colorado, uh, we had a shooting on March 22nd up in Boulder, Colorado, and it does. Uh, I think for anyone that has gone through mass shootings, it re-traumatizes people, and there have been a couple of uh, shootings, uh, school shootings, since uh, kids are back in school. So it does re-traumatize, but you know, what we got to do is build upon the hope that we have and never give up. I was in elementary school when Columbine happened, and I think regardless of where anybody was in the U.S. at the time, they were, they were glued to their televisions, they were glued to their coverage, because unfortunately, would you say it still has the connotation of the first mass shooting here in the U.S. that really caught everybody's attention? Well, you know, I think what happened is everyone said Columbine was the first, but historically, you know, shootings went back uh, to the 1700s. And even within 1990s, you know, there were shootings in Jonesboro and Pearl, Mississippi and Paducah and Springfield, Oregon. But I think Columbine, the reason that we're still talking about it is it was really the beginning of the 24-7 news cycle. And what you just described it, it, they really brought it into our living rooms and uh, there was 24 seven news coverage. In addition to what was happening on that day, we saw the memorial services of the 13 and just the follow up. And so it is something that we always remember. And the response that I get so many times when I am uh, out speaking and doing some other things, people will say, I remember where I was when Columbine happened. You know, for me, I remember where I was when President Kennedy was assassinated or the Challenger exploded, or 9-11. And so this Columbine, you know, hopefully what we try to do out of this is, uh, I made a comment, I never want our students and Mr. Sanders to die in vain, but there have been so many things that we have done, lessons learned from that horrific day that we're doing things better, but we can never give up hope and continue to fight the fight. I heard that you have a, a pretty strong first account of what happened that day. Can you please tell me and our viewers how it all unfolded 22 years ago to the day. What happened? Yeah, yeah well, it was a beautiful Colorado spring day. And um, I did not start out at Columbine. I was actually at a breakfast for some of our students that were being recognized by the Chamber of Commerce. So I'm getting to school about 10 o'clock. And I was looking for a teacher, Kiki Leba, who was a student taught at Columbine and he was on a one-year contract, and I had interviewed him the day prior, and we were getting ready to offer him a job. And so I'm looking for him, waiting for him in my office, and uh, he comes in, and all of a sudden my secretary comes running in, and she said, Frank, there had been a report of gunfire. Well, this is not registering. I've been at Columbine for 20 years, and just a fantastic community, fantastic kids, teachers, and parents support. And so when I run out of my office, my worst nightmare becomes a reality. And there's a gunman that's coming towards me. And I just, everything seemed to slow down. And I sprinted towards a gunman. And people asked me, police officer said, Frank, unarmed, why would you sprint towards a gunman? One reason and one reason only. Some of my kids were in trouble. Uh, I had some young ladies that were coming out of the locker room to go to a physical education class they were unaware of what was happening. And so I knew, and this was before the drills that our kids are doing now and what you grew up when, you know, with lockdown, lockouts, run, hide, and fight. Well, the only drills we did in Colorado really were fire drills. But I knew 
the layout of the building. I had been there for 20 years and I knew if I got him into the gymnasium and it was safe to get him outside that we would get to a safe place. Well, everything was going as planned. I get the girls in this little hallway until I pull on the gymnasium door and it's locked and we're trapped and the gunman is approaching us and uh, trying to keep the girls calm. But needless to say, it was a very anxious moment. Then something happened that I can't explain. Uh, reached into my pocket and had about 30 keys on a key ring. And the first key I pull out off that ring, I stick it in the door and it opened it on the first try. And uh, if that, if I was not able to locate that key or put, put it in on the first try, I'm not sure what the fate would have been. And so it was a day that, uh, you know, I'll never forget. It changed my life and the life of so many. And, you know, last year it was, uh, or a couple of years ago, I was at a softball game for Columbine girls there in the state championship. And one of the girls that was with me, on April 20th, 1999, she comes up and she hugs me and we're both crying. And she said, Mr. D, turn around. And she said, do you see that girl there in the outfield? If it wasn't for you finding the key that day, she wouldn't be playing softball for Columbine High School. And it made me realize, and I told her I had very little finding that key that day. You mentioned the 13. It was 12 students and one teacher who were killed, right? Correct. Many more were injured. And I understand the sensitivity. A lot of people do not want to bring up the shooter's names, and I completely understand that, and I will allow you to if you want. But one thing I would like to ask is how did you feel when you learned that the perpetrators, the shooters, were students? That was difficult. You know, they were two of my kids. Uh, it was haunting from the standpoint that it was uh, the Saturday prior, which would have been, I think, April 17th. They were at prom. And they were with their friends, uh, high-fiving me. They were at after prom, knowing in three days their plan was to, you know, basically blow up the school. And it was very difficult for us, you know. And these were kids that the narrative did really not portray who these two were. These were honor students. These were kids that were involved in activities at school. So knowing that they were involved, it made it so difficult. You know, you just made an interesting point when you mentioned the Saturday prior and then three days later. Was April 20th, 1999 also on a Tuesday? Yes, it was. It was April 20th. Yeah, it was on a Tuesday, 22 years ago. Wow. And we, yeah. Do you think that we are forgetting about Columbine due to the fact of all the other shootings that have subsequently happened? Or how do you think we're remembering? You know, I think what we do is I made it a mission uh, that evening. One of the most difficult things for me, there were so many things that are etched on my mind, but one of the most difficult things is when I had to go down to the elementary school, which really became what is known today as the reunification center. And there were parents uh, down there. And as the day went on, parents were coming up to me and saying, Frank, did you see my son or daughter? You know, they were in a math class or science class and I had not. And there were buses that were transporting kids from Columbine High School down to uh, the elementary school to be reunited with their parents. Well, as the evening, the day went on, a parent came up and said, Frank, we haven't seen a yellow school bus in a while. And that's when a grief counselor came up to me and said, Frank, you need to take these family members into another area and we need to, you need to tell them there's a good chance their family members did not survive. And that's something that I struggle with till this day, you know. And I can remember making a promise that there's nothing I can do to bring them back, but I'm going to speak on their behalf. And uh, the 13 give me the inspiration each and every day to do what I'm doing. You know, I stayed at Columbine for 15 years after the tragedy because I wanted to be the principal until every kid who was in the elementary school graduated. And so I fulfilled that promise. When, when the Remembrance Day happens every year, now it's the 22nd year, is it hard to recount that day? Well, what we try to do, and something happened at the fifth year remembrance, and up to the first five years, really all you knew about the 13 is they died that day. But it, it was Don Anna, whose daughter Lauren lost her life that day. She said, Frank, we need to celebrate their lives. And so basically what we did at that uh, service on that day is we shared uh, family memories of those kids and it really changed the attitude 
we lost them at a very young age, but we celebrated their lives. And from that point on, I think what we try to do on this day is remember our kids, remember Mr. Sanders. And for the past five years, we have done a day of service. So the kids from Columbine, alumni, staff members go out and do kinds of acts of kindness, really in memory of the 13 who so tragically lost their lives. The work continues, and I think it's going to continue. And out there in the community, those 13 will never be forgotten. Thank you. I know that you have a very busy day ahead, likely emotional. I don't want to speak for you, but I really want to thank you for recounting what happened 22 years ago with us and talking about um, the impact now and, and what's being done. So we really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. and. Uh, we can't give up hope. As I stayed, I refuse to be helpless. I refuse to be hopeless and I refuse to give up. But thank you for the opportunity to share my story. All right. Take care. We will um, see you soon. Thank you.